said ever having a milkshake right. IPA. Remember that, Dave? The milkshake IPA? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Till later. We're recording now. We're still, we've been recording this whole time. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Okay, sweet. You think it's going to work? Let's see. Uh, we'll see. Okay. I'm 50-50. 50-50. It didn't work. Didn't work. Okay. Click on the. Just let, let's click restart. on Cubase and then hit P. Click on Cubase and then hit P, and then you can start VMix right afterwards. You, you even if it's not exactly the same, it'll be close enough. I don't know why that's happening. Click on VMix and then hit P. Okay. Now there you go. Warning. The Catholic Man Show contains high levels of manliness. Here we go. It's simple, really. You either want to grow in virtue and holiness, or you want to be a sissy, whiny baby. If you choose to move forward, grab your whiskey glass, because the Catholic Man Show is starting right We're not using our Nuclean Cairn glasses. I know. <laughs> you have one? We should at least put show it. Yeah. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Pumped about this episode. Adam Minahan here with David Niles. I'm just giggling about it. I'm just, ti yeah, tickled. You almost said titillated. Did you no. almost say that? I, said, I was okay. going to say tickled. I thought you were about to say titillated. Oh, no, tickled. Which is kind of a funny word. It is a funny word. But we're going to talk about humor tonight. Yes. I'm really excited about talking about humor because it was a it was a topic that once i started diving into the further i got into yeah. it the more i was like that is very interesting gonna make some dad jokes oh yes do you know how you know can also if, so, if a uh, joke is a dad joke if it comes from a dad the punchline is apparent hmm. <laughs> nice that's funny because it's also true yeah, it, it is, is apparent true. it like, is true and it's also the parent is the yeah, the very, dad. very good. You dude. get it because we'll it's start. We'll start it off. We're gonna start it off the episode. With plays that. on multiple levels. Yeah, yeah, multiple. Yeah, multiple meanings. So, um, I also would like to make a big announcement. We have new Glencairn glasses. Yes. Okay. For the viewing audience, this is our previous Glencairn glass. This is our new one. It's easily five times bigger. <laughs> It's not a Glencairn glass. It is a beer. It is you a beer glass. You could almost fit a quart in here. No, it is It is not. <laughs> it's not really a Glencairn glass. It's a beer glass. But we, when we got it, we were making jokes with my brother-in-law. Like, yeah, finally we got a man-sized Glencairn glass. <laughs> it is going to be awesome, though. We, we did if get, you're like Andre the Giant... You know, if, like, if you're pushing glass. 300 pounds, like of oh, just yeah, solid... He's doing solid 400. Oh, yeah. he was, oh, he was like 500. Okay. 500 pounds. Yeah. Uh then yeah the regular size glencairn glass is like a thimble and i'm pumped about our but new... these are beer glasses yeah so it has our it says catholic mantra cheers to jesus on it in a in a text uh font that we we had see. created see and we're going to send those to uh, all of our high dollar patrons and then also we're going to be it's going to be available to the guys at the camp out this year yes. if you send us a thousand dollars we will send you one of these glasses <laughs> but not two and I'm serious. If if you send us a thousand dollars, we will send you one of these glasses. No doubt. Uh, hey, Dave. Let's let's get into the the bourbon this evening. We're gonna have a bourbon. Yes. Will you pour it for me? Nothing would give me more joy. It's a uh, Long Branch. It's from Wild Turkey. It's the first Wild Turkey uh, product that we've ever had on the Catholic Man Show. Is that true? I believe. Well, at least that I can recall. Wow. We had a we had a beer aged in Wild Turkey. We had beer. Yeah, you're right, Juan. We had a beer aged in Wild Turkey before. But this is Long Branch by Wild Turkey. It's the collaboration with Matthew McConaughey. It is an eight-year yeah. Kentucky straight bourbon. You no, know, sometimes when you're driving a Lincoln and you got your Glencairn glass in hand, not that it's full of whiskey, but... Because you're driving. You're just thinking about it. Okay, so the nose... The, the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm bailing on That's you. That's my uh, Matthew McConaughey... Lincoln commercial impression. So it's an eight year. Okay. Uh, so, which is very, which is uh, a good aged bourbon. Yeah. Eight years. 
the nose says it's very sweet. It's a bouquet of caramel, vanilla, and toffee. Nutmeg and oak flow through the providing additional layers. Overall, the aromas are bright and enjoyable and hard to dislike. I like how the, <laughs> I like how they do that. That is some good marketing. Yeah. Uh, listen, ours is so good. You're not gonna you're not gonna dislike it. You're gonna find it hard to dislike it. Yeah. Okay. The palate it says it's creamy. A mouthfeel nicely uh, complements the bourbon's sweeter notes of honey and orange. Spice is layered throughout the seasoned oak, provides a sturdy base. It's well balanced and pleasant. The finish it says, the pop uh, of heat followed with a a pop of heat followed with a mild dryness powers the finish. Caramel and spice trails off, giving way to hint of smoke on the back end. That is very pleasant. I will tell you, it is a very short finish. Very short finish? It, it's over about as quickly as it began. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, what but did you... But the, the flavor itself is really good. Um, I was... I'm going to have to take... I'm going to have to try it again. I was so... I do get the toffee. I was so to surprised. The toffee was instant almost. By the... Just how it, it just ended. I don't agree with you. I think it's instant finish. Hmm. It's a... Here at Tulsa, it is about a thirty-four dollar bottle of whiskey, so it's not a it's not gonna break the bank. I would like it over. Typically, I don't like celebrity made drinks, right? Or sponsored drinks, just because I feel like they're hokey. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Nick Offerman one with Lagavulin made sense. He loved it. He like yeah. that is a match made in heaven kind of thing. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of liquors out there, but the ones that I have a that I kind of get leery about them with you is when they're using the celebrity to promote like that's the main draw of mm -hmm. the of the spirit is that oh matthew mcconaughey well the, the thing is though his face they, is on it or his name or his his name's behind it they hired him as creative director marketing director for uh, really? wild turkey yes and so he was actually working as a creative marketing director before they even hmm. came out with i wonder this if they whiskey. could pair up with lincoln and make some wild turkey Lincoln commercials. That is how you sell cars. <laughs> you you get I don't know. You get creative without breaking the the laws. I'm not like a wild like I know there's guys that are wild turkey fans. I'm not a big wild turkey guy. Yeah. Uh, they're 101 that they have I don't like. I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Uh this one's okay. Is is uh Soco is that wild turkey? Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know who makes wild Soco cuz I don't drink Soco. I used to. Well, there was a day, right? So it's a so like I said, it's an eight year uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, oak and Texas mesquite charred, uh, and it's very refined. It's forty three percent alcohol by volume. Okay, what do you think what, about the finish? It, is it is it very? I mean, maybe it's just me, but to me, it's like wow, it's very short. It just kind of goes away. It does dissipate quickly. Yeah. It, it, it trails off very fast. I would like if it, it is very interesting because at the the initial the, finish, the flavor is really fine, nice. Was fine, and then it's just and it, then it's just like boom. Yeah, it go, it's like it, it drops just off. ghosts on you. Yeah, yeah it does. You're but right. yeah, I like the flavor of it. If it would hang out, if it would you know like stay a while. Yeah, why are you in a hurry to leave? Yeah, then it, I would um, take your jacket off, hang out for a little while. Right, but for. Th 34 30, bucks. 34 bucks. That's really pretty good. I would I would have this over a regular wild turkey in my opinion. Oh, definitely. And it's 15 I think it's To be fair, I difference. haven't I haven't had wild turkey in a long 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 time. You know, mm -hmm. long before we started doing the show and my preference, my ability to assess the quality of a whiskey has definitely changed in mm -hmm. the course of doing the show. So I don't you know, yeah, right. I'm, I'm just, I, I get you. you. Know, I got you. My old yeah. memories are maybe not fair. It's not a fair judgment, right, dude? To, uh, next week we're going to be uh, having Carla Broussard on the show. Yes, I'm super pumped about that. I am too because I have more time to prepare my topic. Yes, for the next episode. Right. Um, but we're going to have extra content, and, and Carla will be here too. Also, that right. And we're going right. to we're going to give extra content to our patron members from Carla at least two talks mm -hmm. from Carlo that yeah. he'll be giving. We're going to measure the size of his head and make that public. Okay. That was weird for you to say. That was a weird thing to say. a nice head. Okay. do you think? Yeah. Um, but he is, uh, he, he'll be here. We'll, he'll be. Is it, is it weird to judge another man's head? I just thought that was a very weird thing to say. Okay. So yes, your, your answer to my question is yes. 
Sure. It's weird. It is weird. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll have an opportunity to talk with him. He's, he's a hidden gem when it totally. comes to, uh, you know, philosophy, his mind, he's a brilliant mind that people have not mined all mm-hmm. the treasures that he has. Yeah. I mean, at Catholic Answers, he does a great job on the radio, but really his expertise is beyond what the average question that, you know, Catholic Answers gets. Right. Catholic Answers, you know, occasionally they'll do a show where it's on something special, um, but most of the time it's general, very basic level questions. Um, and that, you know, the, their apostolate is so important because they're out there. I donate to a- them. Answering those questions for the people who need those answers and mm-hmm. who want good answers. Mm-hmm. But his specialty is really in like, Metaphysics. Philosophy, yeah, metaphysics. Aquinas um, has five yeah. ways. So right. I'm really excited really excited to talk with him. And then also, uh, we got some news about the camp out, about what we're going to be doing with uh, the forge that's going to be set up. Yeah, the, everyone who comes will have the opportunity to pound on some hot metal. Yes, that'll be there from the beginning, correct? Yeah, so he's going to set it up uh, Thursday evening, mm-hmm. and the forge will just be there. If you want to go forge some stuff, you just... You can. Walk over like a man. And then we have a cigar rolling class. Yeah. Uh, and, and Tomas, he's coming on the camp out this year. So, so if you want to like... Go to ultimocigars.com, I think is what And really, it is. really pick his brain or about... Google just Ultimo Cigars. Yeah. He'll so be that'll there. be awesome. Uh, we'll have Broken Arrow Brewing Beer, which is delicious. So anybody who's coming from out of totally. state will have totally. a chance to, to sip on some local beer. Some local fare. And then we're going to get a chance to hang out with the monks, which is going to be awesome. Yeah. It's always great. Uh, have we had a chance to confirm with Father Nesbitt if he's going to have any participation at all? No. Okay. But that'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, and tell him about the uh, uh, masonry. The, the, or the, okay. Uh, so, yes. George Carpenter is the like world-class uh, carver, stone carver, what it, uh, mason. Mason. Is that what it is? I mean, I don't know. He's not like, uh, like a, what do you call it? A guy sculptor. Who chi- sculptor. Yes. Like when you, a man yeah. who chisels. Yeah. Sculptor. Uh, a sculptor. Right. And he's been working on this thing above the main doorway as you enter the church. It's been behind the scaffolding. It is on the verge of being done. So when we get there, we'll, it'll be one of the last weekends where the scaffolding is still up. Where we, and so we'll be able to go take tours of, and it's basically, it's completed, it's completed. condition. Yeah. So it'll be awesome. Uh, camp out is full, but uh, make sure you to get ready for next year if, you, if you're not going to get a ch- chance to come because it's going to be great. Yep, yep. When we get back, we're going to jump into a really fun man gear on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cool. Do you have a die up here? I do not. Okay. Wait. Yeah, let's keep rolling. I'm good with it. Are you good with it, Dave? I really like this. Yeah, I it's okay. It, I don't think the fish is as short as you say it is. Oh, it like dissipates quick. Yeah, it, for me, it's... it's pretty twisty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What we were drinking last week was really quick. What was that? Oh, the... Whistlepig. The whistle pig? This is way quicker than I the think, whistle pig I think this to one's, me. This one's... I don't think so. Really? This is the shortest finish I remember. The guns, lead slingers, or something. No, the, um, the McGregor one. Oh, proper twelve. Oh, proper twelve. Twelve. I don't know if it was this short. Yeah. I, I do remember so. though that one had a short finish. It does have a short finish, yeah. but it's a good Irish whiskey for for the money. Also, it's also not expensive. Yeah. And you get you get you do get what you pay for. It's good though. I like it. Most of the time. Okay. Let's let's keep going. It's all right. Except when it comes to Lafroy, you get so much more. Oh, we can't forget uh, about the uh, Catholic woodworker. Yes. I'm going to let you do that. I think you're really poised. You're poised, Adam. I don't know about that. Okay. okay. Yep, let's roll. Uh-oh. You got to click on... Because you do, you're a stop. You got to click on... Uh, you have to click on... V-Mix. Cube, V-Base. Yeah. V-Mix. V-Mix. Because you're the the keyboard will only affect one program at a time. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah.
Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan, Juan Posada on the buttons. And give it up for Jimbo Baggins, everyone. Security guard extraordinaire on screen for the first time. We didn't tell him about this, but he did see it coming. He's, it's tough. The thing is, it's tough to get one by Jim. That's why he's our security guard. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, thanks for being here. Uh, we're talking about... We're going to talk about humor, humor today. today. Mm -hmm. We're drinking some... Long Branch. Long Branch uh, product of wild turkey. Mm -hmm. um, Adam, what's the man gear for today? So before, oh, and before we do that... Yeah, before we do, we have an exciting announcement uh, for the man gear. I'm excited. For the, for the remaining of the year... The man gear is going to be brought to you by The Catholic Woodworker. Jonathan Conrad has been a guy who has supported the show since almost day one. He was one of our first supporters before he started The Catholic Woodworker. But you can go to catholicwoodworker.com. If you use TM, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, TCMS, Catholic, The Catholic Man Show. The, the Catholic, Catholic Man, man show. show. You can get 10% off all of your purchases. Uh, he, he makes... Heirloom quality rosaries, crucifixes, yeah, uh, home altars. It does all this stuff by you know like hand tools. Yes, things that you can pass on to your children. Mm -hmm. So, CatholicWoodworker.com. And the thing about sponsors for especially like shows like ours, the the young shows that like aren't big NBC syndicated programs. Right, right. You know, we thrive on have, being able to have sponsors that that support our show. And so one way that you can support the catholic man show is by buying another it's a win-win because you get to buy another catholic product yeah made by another catholic man who's uh, striving to live virtuously and live you know and, and grow his family and raise them to get to heaven uh so you get to support him but, but in doing so you support us as well so mm -hmm. if you enjoy different programs whoever their sponsor is make sure to sponsor them because that right. helps the show that you're that you enjoy yeah so the catholic check them out so uh, today is going to be a, it's going to be kind of an interesting man gear because it's not a specific man gear. We're talking about humor this evening, okay? And how humor is either going to help uh, promote you or, or promote the act of virtuous living or hinder you. Mm -hmm. uh, but did you ever have an uncle that was kind of the 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 life of the party whenever your family got together? The one that was kind of entertaining, the one that like a lot of the kids kind of gathered around either to tell a story or like do so, do a trick or do like some kind of like yeah. well, I, had a, I had a lot of uncles kind of like that, but I did have one who would always pull a quarter out of your ear. If, right. If that's what, like, yeah, yeah. If, that, if that's the kind yeah, of thing you're yeah. talking about. So, yeah. uh, you and I both have dabbled in, you know, card tricks and things like that. It's, yeah. it's fun. What my best, some sleight of hand, sleight of hand, some of my, you know, my best audience are two different types of people. One that are seven years and under. Yeah. Or two, one who have drinking seven beers or more. Oh, okay. Those are the two audiences that I really thrive in. Okay. Uh, and so the, the, the man gear today is some kind of either a uh, card trick or something that you can captivate children. Mm -hmm. Uh, when, when they're all gathered around. So I have this little thing right here. It's a it's light up thumbs. And what I do whenever I get kids around is I, is I play with the thumbs and, and put them through my ears and bring it back and forth. And they're just mesmerized by it. Right. And I know this kind of sounds, it sounds silly. It sounds ridiculous. But one thing that I think that we don't do a good job of as a culture yeah, is promoting imagination, promoting awe mm. and wonder. Okay. Uh, especially in, in, in children. Yeah. And so to get their minds working and like kind of mesmerized into like what you're doing and trying to uh, think about how is he doing that mm -hmm. uh, is something very important to nourish in a child. Yeah. Uh, because in, I agree. in the catechism in uh, 2708, it talks about meditative prayer. And the importance of meditative prayer uh, is it engages the thought, the imagination, the emotion and, and desire. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing is, is that uh, imagination and awe and wonder are gifts that God has given us and that right. we should cultivate them mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to their fullest potential. And so the more you can um, grow a child's imagination, the, be the better opportunity they have to, med to learn meditative prayer. Yeah, well, and those kinds of things lead to contemplation. 
Yes, because meditation ult- ultimately leads to contemplation. Right, and uh, our kids, your kids do, my and mine go to uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, and one of the th- one of the things that's about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is they have the kids do all these intricate tasks where they're concentrating on something, because they say concentration leads to contemplation. Mm-hmm. When you teach a child to focus their their mind on something, which is so kind of a natural thing that kids will do. You know, if you give them something, they have the ability to hyper focus on something like where they're just totally focused on this one. You know, like where they stop paying attention to the things that are around them. You know, right? Oh yeah. Um, and so that's it's kind of a natural thing that kids do anyway, where they're learning to focus their attention. And uh, the imagination is kind of like the intellectual version of you know working with doing something intricate that requires you know uh, hand eye coordination or something mm-hmm. it's sort of like that you're like for mapping the mind. out their mind right uh, to learn how to continue you, imagining you, it's like your fingers and hands you know your body is has you know tools and your mind has tools of its own and you know the imagination is sharpening those tools mm-hmm. and it's ultimately so that we can ponder more deeply the things the things of heaven right and everybody loves to have a fun uncle or, you know, be the dad that yeah. all the kids kind of gather around to either like learn a card trick or, uh, you know, you have a, you have a die, like one of those a rolling die that you have a little trick that you can, you can play with them there or, right. um, you know, these little thumb, that the, die, thumb that die trick though, it is, gets almost everybody. Yeah. It's really good. I wish I could do it because it is so elegant and simple, right? But it's elegance is in its simplicity. But I Truly. think I think it's a lot of fun, and not only that, it brings uh, memories for children. It you know they 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 will remember. Like I remember your dad, you, you know, when we had small faith group, we were gathered around and him doing either some kind of joke or uh, card yeah. trick or you yeah. know so, something that was always captivating us. He's, a, we were, he's an entertainer at heart, right? Yeah. And, and so like we were all kind of just gathered around, like what what is he going to do next? Mm-hmm. You know, and like how did he do that? Right. You know, those kind of things that you think about as a kid. And those are memories that are made that you will remember for, for a lifetime. Right. And, and it develops traditions and it develops, you know, just great memories that you'll get a chance to look back and reflect on as the years go by. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoy... Especially if you have it on video. Oh, yeah. If you have it yeah. on video. But I, I just enjoy being able to have kids come around and just like, you know, show them a, a, something and th- them just like be completely star studded. Like, like, I just can't believe this is happening in front of my eyes. Yeah. Uh, and even though it's like, it's so simple. Like there's so many simple card tricks that you can learn. Well, those thumbs, it's like, Oh yeah. These thumbs that I have, I mean, they're just, you, you they know, just have little, they just light up and it's like, yeah, what just, is that even supposed to be? What's even, you know, like, okay, yeah. there's a light, but like, what is it supposed to, to be you know the kids they don't know they don't even know but they don't they don't like care put it through your ear and bring it back you know and like you can just sit there and throw it up and bring it back down and throw it up and bring it back down you know and like it's just simple little things like that but i don't know when, I just, whenever whenever I just you do that they just like are all around away. and they're just laughing like yeah. do it again no oh my god yeah they're just they just there's something about the innocence of of the children laughing and you know, just, and you getting to pretend to be all powerful and being, yeah. And, and me playing God is, it? <laughs> but I mean that it is, it is pretty cool. I, I enjoy absolute uh, power. I think that it's fun for, uh, for kids. And I think that it's easy for adults to learn. It doesn't take long. There's all these different types of yeah. card tricks that you can just Google online. Yeah, that'll... And now if you're going to like learn some sleight of hand, that does take a lot of practice. Yes. Yeah. That takes hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just doing one basic thing. Mm hmm. But just something simple that that stimulates their imagination, that stimulates the yeah. awe and wonder. Because like you know, that's part of like what the liturgy is, right? It's it it, it brings uh, it's a reverence of awe and wonder that is not of this world. Yeah, you know, so it just helps them as they grow to learn. Oh, this is something different. This isn't a normal. This isn't n- normal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that's set apart. Something right. that it's holy. Yeah, or yeah. sacred. Yeah, the liturgy is like. He, I think it's healing for the person. It's like medicine for you, for, for the, the soul, for the person. Yeah, I mean, not just not just the soul, but I the mean, person. yeah, just like the whole person. Uh, like I was recently at Clear Creek, and they were doing the Kyrie eleison Christi, except it was like Kyrie eleison. I mean, 
except it sounded awesome, you know. Yeah, it didn't and sound mind, like that. Mind, <laughs> that, yeah. It, but it just kept going on, and you know, it's like one of those like, what are how many syllables this is, you know, this. Uh, and but I was like realizing like this is total leisure right here. Like here we are saying Christ have mercy. Why would we want to like get it over quickly? Like this is exactly like yes, let's linger in this Christ have mercy. Let's just enjoy it. Like mm-hmm. yes, celebrate it. Make it super long. Let's let's have a parade during the Christ have mercy. You know, like and that's why it's so leisurely because I'm not in a hurry to stop right. stop saying Christ have mercy. Right. You know, it's like the liturgy isn't about accomplishing something. It's yeah, it, it's, it's the end. It's, it's an a, end. It's, in it and is itself. yeah. It is the end in and of itself, right? And so, uh, anyway, that has not not to do with what we're talking about. Tonight. But it does bring joy, mm-hmm. and you know, part of you know. Uh, so, what would you say the man gear is? Uh, some kind of something? like some some kind of a uh, trick or um, g- g- yeah. gig that you could do in front of especially children. for for kids for kids, right. you know. Um, but, uh, is, you know, Pope Francis talks about that he can't imagine a Christian who does not uh, smile, know how to smile, you know, and may we all be joyful witnesses of our faith. And so we need to be joyful. We need to, be, we need to smile. We need to laugh. Yeah. Uh, and so when we get back, we're going to talk about different theories that they have of humor okay. and then how it's going to be able to either help us or hinder us when we're in the pursuit of holiness. Sweet. So we'll be right back. Cool. So, uh, in this next segment, I'm going to try to get through all four theories. Okay, all in the next segment. Yeah, because that way we can talk about uh, the last segment. Talk about how they're either going to help or hinder, or like how screw tape, specifically how in the screw tape letters. Uh, screw tape talks to Wormwood about how to either use humor and uh, uh, laughter for the the evil. Yeah. Okay. So that's the plan, at least. We'll see how it goes. Good, because I have some questions, some theoretical questions for well, you. Well, I'm not going to tell you if I I can actually answer them. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you. Okay, that's fine. And if you don't, if you're not sure, just just take just, a shot in the dark. Just make it up. Just go for it. Yeah. Because that's what you that's what you learn. You and then, learn and then what you say is that's not me saying it. The, church, the church is the saying the church is saying. The church is saying. I'm not saying it. I'm not the saying it. The church is saying. The church is saying this. I am the church. Thus saith the church. I am the church. We are synonymous. That is how you uh, become a heretic, or just go to hell. I'm not sure. So I guess that's heresy. I don't think there's a lot of heretics probably that are making it to heaven. I don't know. That's a good question. I guess I'm if not you're formal. If you're formal, that's that's bold. That that'll be tough. Right. Material can can. But but the thing is, like, we don't know if somebody repented at their at their last. And moment. I'm not I'm not there to. I'm, that's not my. It sounds like Adam. That's what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. All right, let's keep rolling one before I get excommunicated. <laughs> Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. Sipping on a little bit of Long Branch. We're gonna talk about humor this evening, which is such a human thing. It's interesting that there's not a lot of philosophers that have talked a whole lot about humor, being that it is a human aspect and everybody wants to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's... I wonder if, as a rule, if philosophers tend to not be funny. That, that I don't know. I don't know either. But you know, even if you're, you approach like there's a group of people and you approach that group and they're all laughing they're all they're all laughing like it's almost impossible as a as you approach that group not to either smile or like kind of like act like well, what's so funny you know trying to be a part of that group of like what yeah. would you guys just say you yeah. know uh because or like if you are in a group and everybody starts laughing and you didn't hear the joke right. you still laugh you still too laugh. Like, yeah. yeah, hey, what's going on? Oh, is it funny? Okay, what happened? Tell right. me. But it's because I think humor is 
uh, something that tells you about other people. It's something that brings people together. You know, we've talked a lot about how uh, on our show we, 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 we drink whiskey. It's something like, you know, or, or a beverage of some sort. And, you know, yeah. sharing a beverage together is very similar to sharing a meal together because you, yeah. it, it you facilitates have, good you conversation. Know, you know the person. You know the person. Even if you kind of sit there in silence, but you'd like have a drink together, there's still like something, some sort of, there's like commu- something between you now. Communion of, of, like, of people. Like, you're not strangers anymore. Right. Well, it's kind of the same way. Like I was thinking about this the other uh, the other day, and I actually was telling you about this. So we were putting up sheetrock in your house, <laughs> a huge twelve foot piece of sheetrock on the ceiling, right? Um, but how humor tells so much about who a person is. Yes, because humor can be used for you to like me, for you to dislike me, for you to think that. I'm an attractive person for you to, to di- you know, think that I'm not an attractive person to put, to lift you up, to, to put you down. There's so many different, you know, humor is almost like a Swiss army knife. Yeah. There's so many different applications in humor. Mm-hmm. But when I come to you and I say, Dave, you got to listen to this. This is hilarious. You know, I assume that, you know, because you know me, that this is going to be funny. And we have this bond between right. us that knows you're going to think this is funny. I know who you are as a person. You know who I am as a person. I've mm-hmm. seen this or listened to this, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, and so there's just something about what what brings humor to your life tells about you as a person. Yeah. Which it can be a good thing and can also be uh, reveal things about you that maybe you don't want to be revealed. Well, it... it- there is sort of a litmus, a litmus test in like what you think is funny. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, if you uh, like, if a car runs over a, an animal and you think that's funny, like maybe, you know, it's like, okay, like let's talk about why you think that's funny. Like nobody really likes squirrels, you know? Right. But and okay. That, I that's don't a know. weird example, but that's a, maybe it's not a good example. But if something but like they would have a darkened intellect, it's kind of like they, yeah, like a, oh, if you, if you're, could, if you're yeah, enjoying like, a your suffering. intellect is darkened, if you are enjoy, if you think this is funny, right? You know, so there's four different theories. Before you go, before we okay. go on, I want to tell you that I know for a fact this is what the Lord willed for us to speak on today, because for a fact, Adam, for okay. a, for a fact, it's not you saying it. This is the it's, Lord saying it. Okay. okay? Uh, I was telling Pamela, uh, uh, her ladyship, mm-hmm. we, we, this is what we were talking about. She's like, oh, I just, w- on the way home, I was listening to this Theology of the Body speaker, um, and they were talking about laughter being a bonding thing, mm-hmm. um, and it's supposed to bring people together, and how when, that's why when you laugh at somebody, you're lying with your body. It's a misuse of your body. Uh, like, because this is supposed to bring people together and here you are sort of like turning your sexual faculties into something that's not unitive. Right. You know, abusing your sexual faculties. This is abusing your mm. laughing faculties because this, this too is something that's supposed to bring you together. And so when you laugh at somebody, use laughter as a weapon. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so devastating. Yeah. Because here, like, it's sort of like when, um, you know, in a relationship, when there's infidelity, it just crushes you. Mm-hmm. It is crushing. And so laughter is has it's not the same but it is a uh you know a crushing weapon and that's and that's why because there's it's supposed to be unitive and so there's like uh the things in our life that are unitive have like a shortcut to our soul okay they bypass a lot of our uh wall security that, yeah. that we you know that we build around ourselves sure and so uh that's why it, that's why it hurts and it was like that's incredible. So yeah, I agree. Uh, and once again, all of my best my best ideas come from her, from my wife, right? Yeah. Uh, so when I when I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking like, you know, uh, what is it about things that make things funny? Like, why is it that I can't tickle myself and it be funny? Yeah. Like, why is it that you, I can? Are you ticklish? I, no, I'm I'm not. But like, why is it that I can Are you I can really be not ticklish? T- I could I could be t- like I could be tickled and laugh and not really want to be tickled. Yeah. Right. As a as a general rule. So I started like learning like what are the theories about humor? I think people who want to be tickled, it's like you also might be deranged. 
<laughs> I'm not saying you have a darkened intellect, but I think like there might be, there's probably, there's clearly something wrong with you. So there's four, there's four different theories and they overlap on each other and, okay. and things, but the first one is superiority theory. And this is like found in like Plato, Hobbes, Descartes. It's and these are theories about what makes something funny? Uh, it makes like, or like what is humor in okay. general okay uh and so it's a, the superiority theory is like the feeling of feeling sup superior to, to others it's the, it's the degrading jokes kind of like what you were talking about just a little bit ago like mm -hmm. uh that oh plato is so stupid he just like let him kill like let him kill him over truth you know over what he believed like how like how <laughs> how silly is that idiot yeah or, or you know there's right. you know or like your mom jokes your mom jokes fat jokes you know things like that that uh you know are degrading towards other people mm -hmm. and that was like the first kind of theory about what humor in general was okay uh because again putting putting someone above someone else yeah you be you tearing you, somebody somebody down right which is interesting in today's world that it is okay to do that whenever you're going up in society in the hierarchy of society like you can tear okay people down who are above, above you above you but you can never do that going down it is it is well that actually makes sense because like at the end of the day if you if you like say oh uh you know this person who's like the best the dalai lama is you know like someone who's considered but to be a superior funny. like it's like it's funny because obviously what you say isn't true which bleeds into another, another but if theory, you but if you do it to like oh homeless people are so poor you know like it's like that's not funny man it's not funny like, at all because that's not a joke that's right like it's not every it's not a joke anymore right right and so that is is typically not the humor that we talk about that that's a virtuous humor in today's world yeah right the, the superior theory but there's another one called relief theory and this is like uh, the relief of tension or nervousness, you know, to where you like have to make a joke to kind of, I'm so nervous. You know, that's why a lot of people who start uh, public speaking events, they start it with a joke uh -huh. to get people laughing, to get people to kind of calm down. And it kind of and takes, it helps. It helps them. It too. takes them, it takes pressure off of them. Right. I mean, we, we do that a lot on our, you know, we, we start out and we're, cause we're super funny. The thing is yeah. about that. But you know what, Adam? Looks aren't everything. Look, looks aren't everything. You're right. right. But these are, these are like the, uh, this is kind of like what a lot of modern... Jim just got it. Jim just it got it. it. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be here all night. But these are this is like the kind of the modern sense of like funniness in in like you know just trying to a relief of like I'm a little built up and it's a pressure right. release valve. Yeah, it's or if it's like if you're ever in one of those situations where it's like okay, uh, someone just like was screaming at somebody else and ran out of the room like. A joke is really funny. Like if someone has a joke to tell, it like. Everybody laughs. Like, right. Which yeah. kind of bleeds into another uh, theory was incongruity theory. Incong incongruity. incongruity theory, which is like something that violates our mental patterns or ex expectations. Okay. So it's unexpected. It's unexpected. Yeah. Like, it's like, uh, you know, it, the greater distance between reality, uh, the funnier, the funnier the joke is. Okay. See, I think a lot of my jokes are that way. It's just like the things I say that are funny are just not what people were expecting to be said. Well, and those are the ones that you set up, right? You, this is these are the long drawn out jokes that are like. Oh, you set, see, mine aren't long and drawn out. Like, like, well, you set them up, like you you expect, like that way that the audience expects that it to go one way, and all of a sudden it yeah. goes the other way, and yeah. you're like, what? This is not what I thought, but that is hilarious. Yeah. See, those don't work for me because everybody gets suspicious when I start telling. They're like, I'm not sure where you're going with this, but I'm ready. But I'm. Yeah. I know it's not what. I, but what your you dad want is, me to think. But your dad is really good at those because yeah. he, he's a storyteller. Well, like those yeah. kind and of. And so like, you always start off be like, "Well, this is a. This is no. Oh, it's not a joke. This is actually a true story." Right. Yeah. Those it's are kind always of, a true story. Always a true story. Right. And so the the last one that I want to and this is kind of like uh, the main one that I want to talk about is the pl is play theory, and this is what okay. this is this is what uh, Aquinas talks about, uh, Aristotle talks about, and it's uh, once it was like, you know, it's like uh, something that's when it first happened, it was a very serious thing. But then when you reflect on it, it's like, that's, that's actually kind of funny. Mm -hmm. You know, like I fell off the bike, you know, juggling, I was trying to impress somebody juggling, uh, balls while riding a bike and I fell off and skin. And then I was like, that really hurt. But looking back on it, that was actually kind of funny. Right. Like you fall off the stage and everyone's like, Oh, <gasps> but then if you stand up, it's like, okay, now that's it's funny. funny. He right. didn't die. Or like, you know, just like, um, you know, like acting in general, like, Mm -hmm. acting something out to play because it, i mean like how many times have you said you know we'll laugh about this later right it's not funny right, right now. now but but, but in a year in a year from now it will be right and aquinas talks about how uh, why is that called play theory 
because you're you're it's like kind of like playing oh like a play like a play oh like it's not real right like okay. it's like it's you know, later something on that there's another act okay. almost you I know see. like there's there's a, a part two mm-hmm. uh but aquinas talks about how life is included uh, includes rest as, as well as activity and this play theory is kind of included in leisure and amusement now excess in this would be vulgar what he calls vulgar buffoons because you're just like over the top you continually yeah. do that Deficiency of this, it also lacks decorum. Right. And the deficiency in this is kind of boorish and unpolished. So the virtue... The, uh, uh, like a stoic? A, a, yeah, exactly. So Aristotle talks about how it's uh, uh, eutropelia is the virtue. Eutropelia? Yeah. What? Which, which means like turning well, which is like kind of being quick-witted, ready-witted. Oh, that's me. So I'm that. Anyway, we're going to talk about how this is going to play out in uh, the virtuous life on the other side of the break. We'll be right back. Eutropelia? Eutropelia. Hmm. It's the... Uh Uh-oh, one messed up. You're not going to have... Oh, we went We went went over, so... But you can just record, and it will record on top of it. But that's okay, and I'll be able to move it around. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But so that that that's Greek for meaning like turning well or like uh, quick witted, like Mm -hmm. ooh, you're on top of things. Yeah. Uh, And so uh, Aquinas talks about how uh, there is a obviously the the medium of this the, the virtue lies in not going over the top all the time where like. You're taking things serious. Like there's a serious situation. Yeah. You shouldn't. So he talks actually about how there's seriousness in two different forms. Like there's okay. a serious situation where you shouldn't be like somebody died. Like you shouldn't try to joke immediately when somebody says my dad just died. Right. Right. Like that is a serious situation. Now there's also a seriousness in a person. Like not just an like, act, but like who, I'm, who, someone I'm who taking, can't lighten up. I'm taking things serious. Yeah. Uh, and so he talks about how. The, the medium is like you can't go over the top where you're trying to make everything like life is just a complete joke all the time but you can't be a stoic because god has given us humor as a gift you know and he's used irony throughout the bible to tell us stories to tell us about reality yeah and so you can't utilize this uh for just on a, on different maxes you know should you be record should we like be talking about this on the show or oh i don't know i just was Okay. We can if you want to. I, I mean, mean, it seems like this is the kind of stuff that you'd want to say on the show. Oh. I was just talking to you about it. Okay. I can add this to the I can add this to the podcast. Yeah, so why is violence funny sometimes? So yeah, Grant, this is that's a great question. Like, so why is it that uh making it kick in the nuts? Right. Why is it that I can get sucked into YouTube videos of all these pale videos? And why they are they're, hilarious. They're hilarious. Like, why is that? But what like, if you found you? out, if you found out that like, oh, that guy actually died, right there, like this that video, would be, that like, wouldn't be funny. Anymore. Then it's like not funny, right? It's not funny anymore. Like, what is it about? Like, and I don't have, I, I don't have this answer. I'm just asking, like, what is it about the reality? Of or even s- if they do die, like Darwin Award books. Have you ever read like any of the Darwin Award books? Mm-mm. It's it's a book where you know they give a Darwin Award to someone who dies in a like horrendously stupid way. Like, wow. The thing that you did there was really dumb. And you, it, it, like, there was a guy who was trying to kill a raccoon that went down, like, into this pipe that went under his house. And so he poured gasoline down there. And it didn't work. And so he crawled down there with a lighter because he didn't have a flashlight. And it blew, and up. It blew him up. It blew right. up. Right. And yeah. it's like stuff like that. There's, like, something inside of you, like, wants to laugh. And maybe it's because, maybe it's because I have a darkened intellect. May, you know, like, right. maybe it's me. Right. But, uh, like, that's messed up. It's totally messed up. So, like, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know exactly why, but so humor uh, allows you to uh, appreciate reality for what it is, like, in that we're fallen human beings. And so I, I, I would be interested to know, like, before the fall, yeah, like, what humor would be like. Yes, because, I was thinking about that because earlier. Superior, actually, you know what? Let's just, let's just keep going. Yeah. Because, I, I, like, I would like should, to talk this about this. This is what I'm saying. So there's that line of saying humor is suffering plus time. Mm-hmm. So I actually think it's humor. Like, why is that funny? Well, because that's how actually how you cope with your pain. Because 
Well, now it's yeah. funny. Well, that's why it's also that's also part of the relief theory, right? Like, uh, part of the relief theory is like uh, coping with pain. You know, like you're you have so much emotion. Like the relief theory is a lot of like I have so much emotion of some sort that I'm using comedy, I'm using humor to release this anxiety, this pain, this uh, nervousness. You know, I'm gonna that, laugh it out that I, that I that I have, and I'm gonna use you humor. You can either walk it off or, or laugh, laugh it out. out, or you can walk it out. Laugh it off. Well, walk it out is what the great philosopher DJ Unk said. Walk it out. Actually, I don't know who that was, but I just remember that song. <laughs> I don't know who's, who's saying that. I can't believe you brought that. I mean, it's like, the, what is... It's a ridiculous... It's, a bad, it's not a good song. It's not a bad song, as far as I know. I don't remember. Come on, Adam. Do better. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan, Jim Posada, Jim Posada, Jim nice. Spencer, and Juan Posada. Nice. There's Jim right there on video. You can go to YouTube and you can check out Jim hanging out with us. He's available for sponsor. There's room on his shirt there for a for logo. Sponsorship. We could sp we could sponsor. Someone wants to sponsor the Jim Cam. <laughs> I'm just saying it's that would be that would be epic. We don't currently have, have a, a sponsor a, for have Kim a sponsor. Kim. <laughs> uh, but so play theory, like the reason why people like relate to play theory so much, I think, is also because it, it's like why is Seinfeld so funny? Why is The Office so funny? Yeah, it's because it's taking real life, ordinary, mundane things that happen to every everybody, you know, in in real life, and break like drawing out this. Uh, the scene that is like I can relate to this. This yeah. is actually really funny mm -hmm. um, because it, it's being able to put yourself into that situation. So uh, we were talking in between the breaks. You can go to our YouTube because we uh, upload all of the things in between the breaks. But we were at, we were talking about how humor uh, before the fall would be is very interesting. Like I don't know what humor would look like, right? Because a lot of the humor is. Uh, Re showing rea like reality for what it is in our fallen right, nature. Because the relief theory in a world where there's no suffering, that right. that won't make any sense. Right. Which I would be interested because like even like Sigmund Freud talks before about this the fall. A little bit, but before the fall, you're trying to tell me like you can't, you couldn't fall down and skin your knee. You know. So I think that there was still pain. Sure. There could have been pain. Uh, Natural. It's not, it's not like we didn't have nerve endings. Right. You know. Yeah, I don't know, but like I think it would be funny to figure this and out. And so I think maybe that there could have still been that. Yeah. But yeah, I think a good uh, something we all should consider. And this is something I've had to consider in my own life is just my responsibility to and we all have the responsibility to use humor appropriately. Uh, because humor has a way of glorifying a specific thing. Yes, you're right. Okay, so uh, when you laugh about something, it has a way of glorifying something. Either because either you're putting one thing down which has you know by contrast, contrast glorifies the negative sure. of, of that whatever that thing is or you're building something up specifically um so i'll just tell you that there was a, a point in my life where i had to make a choice mm -hmm. to not be funny like or to be less funny or what you consider to be funny. well make people because i know i could make people laugh right if i say well and, and a lot of times, you know like the f, called, like the, the f word there is something funny well, those about are, using it. Th that's what comedians talk about, like hack hack jokes. They call it. Yeah, yeah. It's because, like, like you don't have to cheap, actually be funny. Yeah, it's a cheap laugh. That's uh -huh. not. That's, it doesn't take any kind of art or any kind of science. That's another thing I want to talk to you about. Oh man, remind me at the end of this episode. We'll continue on on the YouTube. But I want to talk to you the difference between art, the art of humor, and the science behind humor. Okay. But what I really want to talk to about but is so, kind of what you were. Yeah, what, there's a virtue here of, right. of humor. Right, and what you were talking about, um, like you know, using it for the good, or you can use it for the bad. And right. in uh, C.S. Lewis, he, he has a, a book called The Screw Tape Letters. And if you are a big C.S. Lewis fan and you don't know, uh, a Pints with Jack, our friend David Bates, uh, has a, a podcast about C.S. Lewis and all of his C.S. Lewis stuff. So so you can go listen to that. But he has a, a satirical book called. Uh, C.S. Lewis has a satirical book called uh, Screw Tape Letters. And in this... Incredibly good. Yes. And in this, a, a head demon is talking to a, a minor demon about how to corrupt his, pro his 
the person that he's trying to... The minor to, demon is like the inverse to the... Uh, guardian angel. Guardian angel, thank you, yeah. Yeah, so... He's trying to get him to go to hell. Right, so Screwtape is talking to Wormwood about this. He, he talks about there's, there's uh, four different ways of... Uh, there's four different kinds of laughter, okay, uh, 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 of laughter. And the first one is joy. Okay. Which is what you know, Pope Francis talks about, like uh -huh. being a joyful Christian. Yeah, and uh, Screw Tape talks about how if you're you, a joyful person. You just laugh at you you're, know, you're laughing. You, you know, you're, you you're, laugh often. Yeah, and uh, this is like you know, families getting together after a while. It's like and it, everybody likes hanging out with these people. Yeah, and these are you know, kind of festivals as well. Like you know, mm -hmm. everybody gathering together. We're all having fun together. Like you know, laughing, yeah. merriment, you, cheer. It, a joyful person also usually has a belly laugh. Yes, you know, like. A <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. from like deep down. Yeah. Know? Well, and so Screwtape tells him, tells Wormwood, like these, this kind of joy, this kind of laughter should be avoided. Joy should be avoided, which, which makes That's sense. That's what the demons, That's yeah, what the demons the, are saying. The demons want you to avoid that kind right, of joy. Because we should embrace it really. As yeah. Christians. Right. Yeah. So then he talks about uh, like the, another kind of laughter, which is fun. Uh, and this is like emotional, uh, this kind of like the play theory, like having fun, just being, what about like a roller coaster? You know, like when you like come over the top and then you go down and like sometimes you'll That's laugh on sure. the way down. This is what he's talking about because he uh, he also he says like this isn't of use to us as a demon. So in the negative sense, except to distract. Uh huh. Right. Like so he he said like the only use to having to to having a suspect uh, have fun. You can pursue per, trick pers them to pursue this instead of another good. Another a higher good. Right. Um, and so, and then the next one he's talking about was, is, is joke, is what he calls joke proper, which is the perception of incongruity. So this is, um, you know, kind of like what we were talking about, uh, earlier with the con congruity, incongruity theory, like, uh, making, making, yeah, maybe that wasn't actually what you're supposed to be saying, um, kind of jokes. Okay. But my understanding is that the inc incongruity could be totally morally neutral, that, that type of humor. It's, you know, like. You know, okay, yeah, yeah. you said something unexpected. Was it unexpected in a, in a, in dement, a, in a demented way? Right. Or in a fun, just like a, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's be, not what I thought you were going to say. Right, but it could be deficient. Right. Um, in, in, in some If sense. it's morally deficient, right. Right. It could also be morally neutral. I would imagine so, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think probably most of the time, this kind of humor is just... Right. You know, you laugh. Sometimes the person's not even trying to be funny. It's just like, oh, that's not what I thought... You right. were gonna say, and right, right. you think it's so it's kind of funny. So the last one though, he talks about is flippancy, which is the improper, which is the improper jokes, the the immodest jokes, the irreverent jokes, the lack the lack of respect towards another person, um, which kind of blends into several different theories that we talked yeah. about before. Yeah. So I think that there is a temptation among men, especially in men in male only company, that it's like, all right, you're on the golf course, you know, like there's a certain kind of joke that men might tell on the golf course. You know, you know, there's no women around. Right. You know, and I think that we have to really resist the temptation to do this. To tell these jokes and to uh, to encourage those jokes. I mean, if somebody tells the joke uh like depending on how your relationship with that person, maybe you say like, "Man, that's just not like Mhm. Mm you know, maybe you could if if you don't know the guy like I think that a lot of just times kind of don't I, I just say don't give them positive feedback, right? You know, so that well, they don't Well, because a encourage. lot of times they use jokes as like saying like, "Oh, it's I, I didn't do it. I'm just I'm just joking about it." Right. Uh, and you're using that as an as a an excuse to talk about something that may not be a, of holy or reverent or uh, respectable thing that you can right. talk about. But the truth is that there's still a bond that takes place, even when you're telling yeah. dirty jokes. I mean, it's sort of like locker room talk. Right. You know, like, oh, well, it's just guys. When we're in the locker room, there's there's just, it's an all-male environment. Yeah, we use, we're f a little bit freer with our language, you know, in an inappropriate way. And there is, a like, a bond that takes place. Like, yes, because here in this male, like, environment, we speak a different way, mm -hmm. you know, and it, like, it's because we are in common here. There is a bonding element that takes place, but it's not a good, it doesn't create a healthy a healthy type of bond because it's ultimately christ isn't at the center of it right um it's a sin that's ultimately at the center of it you know especially like when you're telling dirt inappropriate jokes you right. know it does create like kind of an inside joke you mm -hmm. know sort of thing but um 
that's something that is common, I think, in male society that needs to be uh, resisted. I mean, just the virtue, you know, is Padre Pio, is he going to be down for, you know, listening to your dirty joke? No. Probably not. What about St. Francis or like any other male saint? Is right. he going to want to hear your joke? Well, and the no. pro- the problem is is that most of the time, and that's kind of what you said earlier, is is most of the time these these jokes glorify sin, right? In some aspect, and so and a lot of them are very funny. They're in fact like they're even they kind of get an extra bump because they're you know a little, a little shocking, bit, a little bit wrong, and a little shocking. You know? Yeah, exactly. And it's like you know, it, there's like a revelry you know that is kind of there like but ultimately at the end of our judgment we're going to be held accountable for, for every, every joke. single thing yes. that we've I'm ever glad you said because i was gonna i was gonna try to make that point yeah every single thing that we've ever said mm-hmm. we will be judged for because the jokes that we tell one another have a way of tainting the water or and pur- reality or, or purifying the water you know because we're all we're all in the same swimming pool here all right um, the, we're all in the same petri dish, the culture. You know, mm-hmm. that's why you like the stuff right. you grow in a petri dish is even called a culture. culture. Sure. Um, and so, when we, it, you know, it's like bad. That kind of thing has a hypnotic poisoning effect on you, on the brothers that you're with. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we need to be uplifting people in a good way. Jokes are awesome. We should right. be telling jokes. Right. And you know, God even used uh, you know irony throughout the Bible to tell about reality, to tell what reality is. He used, uh, you know, humor and irony yeah. uh, to be able to tell uh, more about what reality is. Mm-hmm. And so there's nothing wrong with humor. I mean, God made us human beings and in human beings, we have humor, you right? Know, human humor. I'm sure that there's uh, some kind of wordplay there that uh, the et- etymology of those words probably link up in some, yeah, maybe. some sort uh but um you know so it's not a bad it's not an intrinsic evil but you can use that for well humor is not evil at all right H- uh, humor it, is a good uh, you know in as much as that it uh, humor is a, a good when used rightly properly yeah yeah so i just wanted to like i know that i have in the past used humor to be funny to you know, you know, kind of be the the funny guy in the crowd or whatever yeah. to to get people to laugh to to kind of bond people together, um, and used it inappropriately right. and ultimately we're all going to be held accountable for that. So you you can use it also though to build people up. Um, so anyway, when we get back like uh, on the other side uh, on YouTube, we should definitely talk more about this. You good with that? Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging with us on this episode. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Okay, just keep rolling one because I want to like so. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So, um, so, sure. So, see, there's comedians sure, that talk about that talk about there. There's an there's an art. There's the difference between there's an art. Jim, do you want any more? I'm good right now. You. There's an art and there's a, a science. I'm good. I don't need any more. I gave you some. That's fine. There's an art and Paquito. there's a science. Paquito, not pequeño. Paquito. Uh, between jokes. Yeah. You know, like, there is a formula mm-hmm. of, I like, this is why you say the same joke over and over and over again to different audiences. This is the exact same the way. The exact same way. Right. You know, cause, like, because, like, I know you I, need to build... I input A to B to C, and it equals laughter. You know, right. like, I, I there's a formula I know that if I do it this way, it will yeah. yield laughter. Mm-hmm. But then there's also like what they talk about art, uh, the art of a joke. And I think that I don't know this for sur- for sure. I mean, correct correct me if, if you think otherwise. But like I think that this that the art of a joke is more wittiness. Is more like what Aquinas was in Aristotle was talking about uh, the virtue of uh, utrapalia. Yeah, I mean probably that's. I, I mean because just to like it's ba- quick. Break it down like. To define the, the science versus the art in its simplest form, the science would be like: here's the formula, you know, this joke, write it out on paper, this mm. script, this is a joke, and it is funny. Now the art comes down to two people could tell this joke. One person is funny and the other one isn't. 
the person who's not funny is not going to be good at, at telling this joke. When they tell it, it's just not funny. But then the funny person comes along and tells it, and it kills. Mm -hmm. You know, because they have the... You know, it's about the performance. Well, okay, you and know, so and, what happens... And, and it's about selling it and, you know, portraying the characters and telling the story. I mean, because ultimately, telling a joke... there's Telling a joke is also different from being funny. There are some right. people who yeah. can tell a good joke but don't have their own jokes. You know, like, um, sure. don't have that spur of the moment, you know, like, oh, everything you say, I have a funny comment for you about that, you right. know? Um, and so there's a difference between those types of funny, funniness. Isn't it weird also that like, whenever you're talking, like when a comedian makes a joke, you know, they're trying to uh, relate to the, to the person, uh, maybe something that a current event, and he, he tells the joke and, the formula is good, right? The formula it works out, um, and he tells the joke and it bombs. And what does he say? He says, "What too soon? Am I too soon?" Mm -hmm. You know. And so it's it's interesting how sometimes a joke can be formula like correct, scientifically correct to yield a joke, but because humor humor. Uh, it, encompasses emotion as well in a, in a human being and like yeah. we're humans and so we have uh you know it, it kind of goes back to the incongruity or uh yeah uh no no, no i'm sorry the, the the relief theory and the play theory like uh just because it's it it could be scientifically correct uh, because we are emotional people you could say something that is not okay right now because it's not funny like there's not there hadn't been enough time that has passed right yeah and when the when the comedian says too soon it's that's also funny because it breaks the rules of social convention uh from what the people expect from the comedian the people do not expect him to ask them a question right okay and so because like all of a sudden he's asking you a question it's like oh that's kind of funny mm -hmm. you know and it's obviously rhetorical but there's a social convention still and he broke those rules and the audience didn't expect it sure you know and so well that's why like a comedians when they first come out sometimes they they play you know they quote unquote play with the crowd you know they 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 talk about like whoever's in the front front row like hey right. when it's like hey you sir 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 and when you, like he actually asks that guy a question everybody's they've uh it's kind of like they're it's built up they're ready to laugh like right it's you know like the the rocks on the edge of the cliff and, and they're, they're ready to drop it you right. know and, like, and, and and laughter is contagious right oh so yeah. like you get the first row laughing and the second row starts laughing and mm -hmm. the third row starts laughing have you ever and, like had those weird moments it's typically it typically only happens like in small groups like maybe with one other person because if there's too many people i don't know why it just doesn't happen where you just like cannot stop laughing. laughing and like and it's like joan you, does that you get that one once why oh, yeah the, john joan joan, joan like, she she does do that she it's starts hilarious. crying and she but can't like stop. you get like ugly face yeah. you know like where your like cheeks are like attacking your eyes right or something and you just can't stop laughing and well dude there's some like in, and like your whole body is hurting just from but it's everything is just so fun and it's not even funny but for some reason like you've Laugh. gotten into some this state with this other person that it just like that's what's so interesting right because like it brings like this the laughter between two people is like some kind of community in fact i was reading uh the other day when i was doing a little bit of research on this episode that in india they have this like quote unquote laughing yoga and all it is <laughs> is people all come together and they you know, for 15 minutes and they just start laughing and and at, at the beginning it's all fake laughing and then by the end they're all laughing like genuinely for 15 minutes and they leave hmm. and they feel better and i think that it's interesting because when people fight you know uh, fight depression yeah uh, some of the, some of the psych psychologists or psychiatrists talk about like you you should uh look for the things that are good in life and that are funny in life mm -hmm. to laugh yeah uh, because laughter well, laughter is medicine for the soul i mean medicine, that's, that's right. what they say right. and so uh this idea of like i think it is absolutely hilarious to think about people coming together and they just start like ha, 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 ha. and then 15 minutes in they're all like literally laughing together what i always get a kick of 
kick out of, and this is like not exactly what we're talking about, but you know, everybody knows that a, a handful of people who just have like the silliest laugh. Like mm. there's, it's like they'll laugh and you'll say, there's no way that's your real life. Like that's, that's your laugh. Like that's really the way that you laugh. You laugh like that. Right. You know, and like the, just hearing yeah. them laugh, it's so, it's just so ridiculous the way that a person laughs. You just can't help but laugh, you know, just because yeah. like, I can't believe you laugh that way. It's like, but it's funny how, how God like makes that, you know, part of who that person is where they can't really change that. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I know. And it's just like thinking about how many different types of humor there are. Uh, because it's not like your brand of humor is 100% unique. Um, I mean, humor is almost always like it's just the biggest plagiarism fest typically, you know, in the world. Like, Except except play theory because it's just like life. Right. But um, every That's now funny. and then, you know, okay. So life is funny. If you go back to my... Do you remember like back in the day at the end of the year, like of the school year, you'd get your yearbook and have everybody sign your yearbook? Mm -hmm. Maybe that was just cap. Maybe it was just like private school. No, no, no. That happened. Okay. If you go back to mine year after year after year and look in the back where everybody signs it, the, everybody was always saying, stay funny. Like that's, I've been the funny guy my whole life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so- I have encountered a couple other people in life. It's like you and I have the exact same. We like have the same thoughts about stuff, you know. Right. And so it's like I know that my humor isn't a hundred percent unique, right? Um, and so I, but it, it it bonds you to those people. Yeah, kind of. But it's also like, hey, bro. <laughs> There's only, there's only, there's only enough room in this town for one, yeah, funny guy, for one, one of this kind of funny guy, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only one Mexican, and that's Juan Posada. Yeah, that's funny because he's not Mexican. But well, talk about the virtue of laughing at yourself. Yeah, mm. so I mean that's part of the relief theory, right? Is is you can use you uh, could laugh at yourself also in a. In a, in, a, in a vicious way. Oh man, I, this, so this is what I was want, I also wanting to talk so about. If, if, oh, wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So don't, okay, so don't okay, lose sorry. my thought, my train of thought, because I wanted to talk about this because that's what Saint Philip Neri did all the time. Mm -hmm. He used, uh, you know, then he's the patron saint of uh, uh, of comedy, right. which he wasn't a comedian, but he he used the uh, the virtue basically of 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 laughter for his humility, because he would he would like. Do things that were really fun. Yeah, I like did it. shave yeah. half his beard and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but he would do things even before that, like uh, bef right before mass, that would be that would be really funny, uh, like uh, like doing impressions and things like that of people, to get his mind off of what was actually about to take place, because it was so overwhelming to him that it was so real to him nice. that he would be so. Uh, enveloped like encapsulated into that moment that he wouldn't be able to uh, you know, uh do the liturgy really yeah so he like beforehand he would always like do things that would like keep his mind off of what was actually about to happen which is i think a, a i don't think that would probably be work for, for a lot of people but for him it did but he'd also like you know shave like like you guys were saying like shave half of his beard but right you know to to one one like kind of like what you're saying like break down the walls to make kind of people laugh and like we're human we should laugh like this is this is kind of funny but also to bring about you know to he would grow. also make his spiritual directees do it right yeah yeah, yeah. But to grow in humility yeah you know this is kind of funny but also people will like, laugh at you right but that's okay yeah we're human and we, right. can, we can laugh at each other yeah we make funny we, we do funny things we say funny things we we uh make mistakes and we can laugh about it yeah but there is also a, you know, like, yeah, because if you can't laugh at yourself, there's like, everybody kind of knows there's something not healthy with, with your mm -hmm. psyche, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but there's also a negative, you know, it can be taken too far, uh, that whole laughing at yourself. So this is what I wanted to ask you. I mean, I wanted to do it on the show, but that's okay. We can do it now. Um, because, you know, there's like a puritanical approach to this conversation where it's like, all right, yeah, we don't want to have humor that isn't pure you know that lacks in purity and at some point you could like oh uh you can almost make the argument that every every joke 
every funny thing like either is a lack of decorum or a lack of like you know it's not some the, kind of deficiency it's not the proper thing to say you know right. like there's some deficiency and it's like you end up where no Everybody, nothing is funny and you're you stoic. can't be funny right and you're a stoic you don't have to be a stoic you can still you can still laugh about like um you know when well, you're if nothing is when, funny you, you're not gonna laugh well you you would laugh with the joyful laughing that you were talking about like oh your kids run and give you a kiss you know and that's funny or you know that's not funny but you laugh you know like just from joy okay so you could still laugh but like i wanted to get your thoughts about that you know like can you do you think you can make those arguments um that like there's a deficiency in every joke and that's why we're laughing and therefore we shouldn't be telling any of them no i don't think that i don't think so okay i also don't think so so we settled I'm glad, that i'm glad you said i'm glad you said that adam thus saith the catholic man show look that's not us saying it it's, it's the church it's, it's it's our podcast yeah that's the podcast saying it um but yeah so no no because i think like there's again i think it goes back to humor uh reveals a type of what uh, of the reality that we're living in and we're living in a fallen world and so there's going to be things that ha that happen uh in the fallen world that uh you can use to grow in holiness or you can use to because like there are things like kind of what you're talking about like oh I, as i'm walking out to give a speech i accidentally fall i didn't mean to like that wasn't planned right uh i can use that as a you know as a humor to kind of build up like oh that was funny you know and and grow in in humility yeah or i could just like run off the stage let me ask you this or or like you know say a swear word and say like who put that chair there you know that i felt you know and like you can use that obviously that's not the right thing to do no don't do that let me ask you this are farts funny okay so uh so there is a uh there's man i wish i had the the, the paper because there's a there's a uh actual uh philosopher out of maybe maybe massachusetts university of massachusetts and he did there he said there were three things that were funny and one of them he he said were farts yeah farts are clearly funny um like if somebody farts i don't know why we have to like as a society pretend like nobody heard it that didn't happen you know like because like it's like clearly everybody heard it, you know, but we we all do this thing. Oh, let's be polite and pretend like we didn't hear it. It's I don't like, know. I, like, it's like, I don't know. Like, but it's, it's like, what is it? It's like supposed to be embarrassing, you know, that you farted. Yeah. You know, but it's like, I fart all the time. <laughs> okay. Like, like, it's in accident or on purpose. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what makes it funny. Yeah. But. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. There's, there's different. I'm like, gonna, I'm I, gonna just tell you this one. I'm curious. As far as I know, I have never in my life farted on accident. Like every single fart of my entire life has been like, I got to fart, and then I make a choice. Hmm. I like, I've never accidentally farted. Okay. You know uh, the thing about me, I'm a pusher. Um, but I'm I I am curious on like what like why it actually uh like what actually is funny and what isn't like why it why is it right uh, you know and like to me like humor in in, in <laughs> Jim's we're, over here laughing we're all we're all laughing about about Margo on, on Facebook I'm muting you now uh oh Margo's Margo's out yeah that's okay uh like uh she still loves us and we know this. Um, yes. but it is interesting on like what, that's why I was like trying to like the very, very beginning of the episode. I was like, why is it that you can't tickle yourself? What about like, but, but tickling is, I don't think it's a good example because tickling is decidedly not funny except for the person who's doing the tickling. And that's clearly a demented. No, it's not like I tickle my kids all the time. And no, no, no. It is... But just cause they're laughing, it doesn't mean they think it's funny. No, they definitely do. No. Yeah. Yes, no, they absolutely no. do. Okay. Laughing or being tickled is not, it's not, you're not laughing because it's funny. You're laughing because you're having a like a physical, it's a physical, biological response. It's not because it's funny. 
No, but at one point, it becomes funny. No, at one point, it becomes not funny. Well, yeah, the line also, yeah, no. you, you can no, also get to where it's not I, funny. I think that in, in the beginning, it's pretty logical. But then, they're laughing so much that you can do, you can touch them in the forehead. And they'll laugh because they think it's funny, even though they, they don't have that well, physiological... And part. also, there's a difference between, like, very small children mm -hmm. who sure. have, di have, like, a different response to it, and then, like anybody older than very small children yeah, that and, and i i think i think either uh either but tickling aquinas, is not a good example because right, tickling I, I is not saying. funny I, I understand but so uh either aquinas or aristotle i can't remember one of the two were talking about how play theory is typically more perverted for the old for for, for adults than children because children naturally play yeah they naturally like you get a bunch of kids together they're just gonna start playing yeah, or right. that, I mean, and, and their it, imagination and is, they and that's what they do. Like you put kids together, and they say, "All right, you're the mom, you're the dad, I'm the child, right? Um, you're the dog, and they start and playing. This is what we're doing, and they like establish all these rules, right? You know, and they, and they just and start they have playing a play, right? But but adults struggle to play anymore, or, or struggle for leisure. I think you know is another word to, to use that you know you're struggling to play, you're struggling to like uh like get away from the the daily grind mm -hmm. and so when you're when you're trying to to get away from the daily grind those are the kind of things that the devil loves to to creep into and uh pervert uh and so like that i think one of them was talking talked about how uh that's why a lot of times adult play their like adult jokes like that are degrading or disrespectful or th something like that because they're so far removed from being able to just actually play that they uh uh result into some of their fallen nature well and also that you know think about what the kids are playing about i mean like when they play they're playing the things that they fantasize about mm. you know the things that mm -hmm. they don't that they that they're not the things mm -hmm. that they wish they had mm -hmm. the things that they that they idolize you know mm -hmm. mom and dad and and so as adults, what is it that you fantasize? You know, so it's, uh, a, that's a good point. It's, it's, a, it's, you know, when your fantasies aren't ordered properly, then yes, you will, you'll have a tendency to do that. Yeah. Um, just because the, you know, it's a imagination. It's a, a part of having a healthy imagination, even as adults. Yeah. And because Aquinas talks about like how, uh, it, it provides, an occasional rest mm -hmm. like humor provides an occasional rest yeah and so um sometimes you can use that rest for the good for good or, or yeah. for bad so like a mystic for instance it's not that they would just never uh have perverted like a joke whatever that, that, that they wouldn't enjoy it it would simply never occur to them right okay because that's not what their that's not their fantasy that's not they to them they would have a joke that had would have like something to do with like an ironic some of the ironic essence of god mm -hmm. you know um and there are plenty of ironic Parad paradoxes. like a paradox you know like mary is uh god's wife mom and daughter you know like that's kind of funny like mm -hmm. she's her own grandma you know like you get into some it's it, but it's just funny to think about right yeah um but it's it's it also brings joy you know it doesn't it's not like you're reveling in anything you're not you're right not, you're not like because you're, you're enjoying dirtiness right because you're it brings joy because it's uh, it's showcasing reality it shows right. to truth mm -hmm. so right now i'm reading uh discernment of spirits by father i can't remember his name okay anyway he wrote this great book he's father kind of, kind of like the best guy on it and he's talking on about discernment of spirits. This, the book is called discernment of spirits, right? Um, okay. What is that? We Google that one discernment of spirits. It's a book. I was going to say she's her own mother-in-law. It's what you were thinking. Okay. She's her own mother-in-law. Timothy Gallagher. Discernment of spirits. Huh? Timothy Gallagher. Yes. Father Timothy Gallagher. Okay. Uh, and one of the things he talks about, it's all about using the it, principles of Ignatius to discern and how like Mar discern. Mario got it too. She, like she should, she should be, Thank you, Margo. Margo's a, like, she really is kind of our official Googler. Yeah. Way to go, Margo. We should give her $1 for 
for every time she no dude we'd be broke <laughs> I don't that, actually you're right that could be very expensive i have no money <laughs> Juan's Juan's like super rich, right? We'll give we'll give her all Juan, of Juan, Juan's pesos. Juan, after this, I need your bank account information. Yeah. Um. But anyway, he talks about you know, like discernment of spirits and how like one of the things you use is the like how do you feel afterwards? Mm -hmm. You know, after you've like the intellect has, you've pondered something. What does it? How do you, how does it leave you? Like, what are your emotions? afterwards yeah that's interesting you know and so like pondering the irony of mary being her own mother-in-law afterwards it leaves you like with a sense of like kind of innocent joy whereas if you like are thinking about something perverted or you know something else mm -hmm. that's that's not wholesome it does not it leaves you with a sense of like lowness yeah. and and dirt and filth you know uh, anyways, the, like that's, that's a, interesting. That's a yeah. something to, you know, like we always kind of downplay emotions in the moral life because emotions can cloud your intellect your, all right. in and your judgment accurately deciphering if something is moral or immoral. Mm -hmm. But the emotions God gave us emotions for a very important reason, mm -hmm. um, and it's for you to help. It's part of you know uh, part of having a, a rightly formed conscience those emotions are often the thing that mm -hmm. that decide that tell you oh i did something wrong yeah i actually didn't know whether it was wrong but now in the like in the aftermath i i know like you just know it's wrong mm -hmm. uh, and and I, i've actually felt that way about jokes i've told before yeah you me know, too like where it's like i i told a joke and it was like killing yeah and i was the, you know like, like for me I like being the center of attention. That's why I do a podcast. What? That's why I podcast. Really? Yeah. No. Because it's like, everybody, everybody, hey, come listen to what I have to say. I don't believe it. In that. fact, visit our YouTube channel so you can look at me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's like, so I've had plenty of times where I was like, later on, I just regret saying that. Saying what I said. Anyway. I don't know. I didn't have anything else. I don't think for the for humor, but well, I just we end the show on a high note since we're talking about humor. Okay. Just get the most depressing story. Oh, I have a story. I didn't tell my story. Oh man. Okay. I may add this. To, can I add this to the? Well, it depends. Yeah, you can add it to the podcast. So, uh, recently I was pull it. I I thought this would be funny. Uh, we got, you know, we ordered more Glen Karen glasses here for the show. Right. And when we do that, we order them in bulk. Right. So that they don't cost uh, an arm and a leg. Um, and so we got, I don't know, how many hundred? Uh, three or four? Two hundred. No, three hundred. Yeah. Three hundred. Two hundred fifty to three hundred, something like that. Um, and so Adam gave me a box to take to my house, just like, because we have a problem with storage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... We kind of disperse stuff mm -hmm. out among uh, among the team. Jim has a lot. Jim has a lot of stuff <laughs> at his house. Hey, Jim, I just want to let you're really great. Yeah, just Thank really you. great. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, but so I was taking this. I was walking home with this huge box, and I walk in the door, and I thought it would be funny. And I was like, Pamela said, "What is that?" And I was like, "I don't know. It's for you." Adam gave it to me and said it was for you. It's for you, and she's like, "Really." And she started getting really excited, and immediately I was like, "Oh no! Oh no! This is not. I didn't anticipate. I didn't anticipate that strong of a reaction from you. Yeah, I thought you would know that Adam would not be giving you a big old a big box. That I was not being serious. Right? You don't. You do think I'm being serious? And so she opens it up, and it was just glasses inside. It was just like our Glenn Karen glasses inside. And she's like, "These are just glasses." And I was like. I know, honey. I was just kidding. I'm so sorry. And, and so she's like, starts laughing and then she kind of starts crying a little bit, you know, and cause she was like so excited about like, wow. Cause it was a huge box. Right. Right. And like, what could Adam possibly have gotten? And, she, and then she's like, I never get anything. You know, you get all this stuff all the time, you know, and, but she was also like, she's kind of like tearing up about it, but she was also laughing at the fact that right. it made that she was upset about it. Like, She's like, I don't know why I'm so upset. So, it was a funny, it was like, kind of funny. 
Now that like uh, more than a week has passed, it's become a little bit more funny. Now. It's uh, incongruity theory. Yeah. Uh, so what ended up happening? So anyway, uh, when she got home from her trip today, there was a box on the counter that was a uh, from me. Well, I told her it was from you, but just just to replicate the thing, she knows you didn't buy it for. Her. Good. But it was a, it was a nice. It was a very nice gift. I thought. Very expensive. Yeah. It was. So that joke costs you quite a bit of money. And let's be honest, that's what counts <laughs> a lot of times. Like, how much does it cost? Like, why are diamonds such a big gift? Because they're expensive. It's not because they're, like, so great in and of themselves. I mean, diamonds are pretty. But they're not like, oh, $1,000. Like, the reason why $1,000 diamonds is such an awesome gift is because they cost $1,000. You know, it's just, like... Sometimes we... What's the gift? The gift is, I wasted $1,000 just on you. Sometimes the jokes that we we say cost us a lot of money. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. And we can end it on that. <laughs>